You know, but I'm breathing. My kids is good. And uh, we got a lot to talk about, so I guess I'm happy. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy because um, a lot of what I'm, I have right now is a, is a continuous appreciation that I've been able to architect a bubble where when all this craziness is going on, I can still like live a peaceful existence, but I still have empathy for everyone that's like, you know, on the front line that doesn't, that, that, that is not able to, you know, shield themselves from this lifestyle of having to be scared all day, every day. Cause it's a lifestyle. Cause oh yeah, for and me, it's one, you know, it's also one that us as, as as black folks and people of color, like even when you reach, you know, a certain status economically, you know, like right now, if you was to come come through the hood, somebody would just see you as a black man in a car. They don't care what in the time how nice a car it is. So you know, it's like some of us can get away from it for a while, but when you're in a whole country that's built like this, you really never get away. You know what I'm saying? You, you see, my thing is, I don't really give a fuck if they see a black man in the car. What I'm bothered about is when the police pull up behind me, I got to be scared that they're not going to be fair. And and right. that's what what I'm bothered. Like prejudice and all that, that don't bother me because that just, to me, you're going to have an unhappy existence. It doesn't affect me. You could be a moron. I'm going to embarrass you. I'm going to make you feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But... When it comes to, like, this situation that happened, it's like every hundred cops, you might have, you definitely gonna have some kind of a killer racist cop, you know? And just like, for me, when I see how upset people are about a white cop killing a black man, sometimes I think, why? Well, we don't get that mad when a black man kills a black man, which happens every day. Like, well, how come we don't protest when we kill each other? Yeah, all valid questions. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I had made a post not too long ago that said that this, this war that we in has many layers to it. And we have to address all of them for us to really move how we want to move. You know, I think we've been doing that for a little while now. I mean, just last week or just two weeks ago when we was having the conversation with OG, you know, we talked about we talked about a lot of this before this happened. We talked about, you know, the police brutality. We talked about how to better uh, education. We talked about, you know, unity. We talked about these things, you know, and they're all part of the same battle that we're in. You know what I'm saying? And they all got to be addressed. You know? But my, so. my, my thing is, Taj, and uh, we have a guest today, a, a, another therapist. I think you kind of, can you make it where you know? <laughs> my thing is, again, like, I expect a white cop to be racist so it doesn't surprise me. There's no shock in that. It bothers me when a black man kills a black man for no reason. More. I mean, yeah, there's there's no reason that, that is considered a good enough reason, but it's reasons, you know, there's when a, reasons. When a black it's man... It's trauma. True. It's a lot of, there is... What, what I'm saying is, how come that doesn't pull a trigger for us when we kill each other? How come it's not so appalling? Because that's something that we've become accustomed to, through trauma. You understand? It's, it's normal for us now, especially for those of us that are living in the streets. You know, us that are living in the streets and abide by a street culture and a street code, which is from where I come from, that's part of the game. And that's what's wrong with it, is that it's natural. And we've become numb because of all the trauma. We've learned how to disassociate, you know, that psychologically, that's what we call it. You know what I'm saying? We, we dissociate and we put it to the back of our minds like it's not happening, but it is. The trauma still stays there. The brain knows it, the body knows it. You get, you get what I'm saying? And the anger gets built up unconsciously, unconsciously, unconsciously to where our only outlet because we're trapped is each other. 
And when you've been doing that for years and years and years, that becomes a way of life. And it starts affecting every aspect of your life, regardless of what you're doing. Well, I, I wish that that would become the case so that we would maybe think twice before we hurt ourselves. I just feel like we hurt ourselves every day a lot more than they hurt us. I think we hurt each other more than they hurt us. That's just how I see it. Um, and another thing, and actually, uh, Taj, I, I wanted you to introduce yourself and introduce to each other, I, I guess. Hi, how you doing, Melody? Melody it is? Yes, hi, Taj. Hey, how you doing? How's I'm good, I'm good. Yes, likewise. So um, I'm pretty much a New York State licensed master social worker that deals with a lot of uh, uh, philanthropy work here in the city from a therapeutic perspective. Um, so um, I do have a lens of, of, of therapy. Um, it's funny that this is the, the topic of discussion because um, I do a lot of philanthropy work and uh, community engagement in general. And uh, I'm actually, I just got thrown into a group chat the past five days now with about 20 officers who um, have come to me to see how they can de-escalate their emotions. The mm -hmm. um, majority of them are, are black and brown and they're, they're hurt, they're angry, um, they're conflicted and um, th they wanna do something about it. And so uh, I practice the spirit of inclusion and I, I play a very neutral position when it comes to certain matters, but I'm also very black and white. So I will let you know what's right and what's wrong. Um, so interesting enough, we, we actually have an officer in the group. There was a young man um, on the New York City public train station that was attacked recently, a uh, teenage boy. I don't know if you guys heard about it, but what the, the police officers didn't know was that that young boy was the son of this cop. Mm. So <laughs> giving you that perspective and that swing of things, he's pissed off because he's just like, I represent this badge, but I know the truth behind it, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so we are, per are, are in the process of trying to organize um, an, a, a more like an acknowledgement, apology, acceptance movement from the police side. Mm. And they're down to, to be very honest with you, like, you know, we're going back and forth and they're like, should we do this in uniform? Should we not do this in uniform? And I'm like, well, what are, what, what are the repercussions if you guys do this in uniform? And they're like, we are not legally allowed to protest the uniform, but we're down to break the rules for a slap in the wrist, mm -hmm. um, well, which is a slap the, in the wrist in comparison the, to the bigger picture. And the, the, these officers in this group are not just police officers, they're court officers, they're peace officers, and, but they're black men and women first. The, the, they're, they're over it. The head officer, or the head of the police in Minnesota, actually, just on CNN, was able to talk to the brother and the lawyer. And he actually basically said that the other people that didn't step in should be charged. Because they were asking him, like, you going to charge him? He's like, I can't charge him. But their silence wasn't right. I forgot the exact words he said. But it does seem like certain police are trying in this moment, today, not yesterday, but today, have accountability to defuse this. Right. Yeah, I mean, the, the, these officers are, are ready to take a new oath saying, if we see any corrupt cop, we're no longer following the blue code. We're not, staying, we're not standing behind the blue code in, a, anymore. If we did or we didn't or whatever, whatever have you moving forward, we want to make a statement saying, um, we love our badge, but, but, but we don't want to be a part of the dysfunctions of the system. And all of our systems have dysfunction in it. So um, that's where we are. So, you know, they, they brought me in to try to kind of look at this from the psychological perspective on, on how to do this in a way that's going to be productive and not just another situation that does not have a, 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 an active plan after. When is this going to happen? I mean, Go ahead, I, I think, not to cut you off, Dane. I think uh, psychologically, when you look at it, right, what's the most important thing or one of the most important things that any client, let's say they're, you know, let's say they're addicted to a substance or they, they have some kind of uh, maladaptive behavior or some of, some of that nature, right? One of the most important things that they can have is a support system. 
in all of those situations. So I think what needs to happen with that type of situation is the same thing that we need to do as people of color, all right? Is we need to centralize, all right? If 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 cops from New York City get with cops from uh, uh, the LAPD, you know, or Chicago or Miami, especially like the big departments, you know what I mean? But really city to city, if the cops that are not with that blue code stuff of sweeping things under the rug, you know, if they get together and they're able to provide support for each other, they won't have to fear that their job getting, you know, losing their job so much. There's support there. You get what I'm saying? It's kind of like, it's kind of like when you have like a union, like, you know, if you look at the sport, if you look at sports, or if you look at a lot of other big corporations, you know, they have a group of people that are in charge of supporting them when they have grievances, you know, you have like, like a union. And that's what's missing with the good cops. Because from what I've known, a lot, like you said, a lot of the good cops, they face persecution when they when they go and say something, you know? Well, or, it's, or they it's, be it's like, it's, it's you know, a, from the other cops. Being a cop is like being a part of a brotherhood. You know, it's being a part yeah. of a family that right. they take very serious. And I was saying this to the congressman t- earlier today. And unless, like, my brother did something where it was, like, too much of a violation, like, you know, doing something with kids or something crazy, I doubt that I would ever arrest him or or, 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 or put him in jail, you know, if he was selling drugs or doing some dumb shit or had a fight. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't lock him up, you know what I mean? So you can't expect them to do that. I was suggesting the police for the police where it's just against. But what you're saying makes sense. Uh, and and the question is like if you could get that group of people from um, the officers from New York to get with a group from California and Philly and all come together, that would be really dope and a good move. Yeah, and, yeah, and I, I don't, I'm, to keep it real, I think it's totally realistic. And I think the other thing that we have to understand when we strip ourselves of the titles and the positions and the role that we play is that humanistically, human behavior, you got we have already. It, it's ingrained in us to be violent. Mm -hmm. Men are hunters, Mm -hmm. they hunt. So we automatically, indistinctly inside of us have the ability to be violent. We have the ability to survive. Mm -hmm. And survival skills are sometimes by any means necessary. So being violent in wars have been happening from the beginning of time. Cain killed Abel. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we have characteristics as human beings that are negative and positive. The spirit of jealousy, the spirit of lust, those are the primary emotions that are rooted in hurt or are rooted in other things. Well, and you, so, need a lot, you need a lot of those emotions. And, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You need these things to survive. You need these things in order for, for us to continue the human race. So there's traits that we have, and it's a very broad scale on how aggressive or non-aggressive in terms of personality best acts and needed to be acts for the purposes of, of gaining realization, of developing your rationale. And those are the foundational things that are needed to then make better decisions. Because well, once you have that clarity, then I could be angry. I'd be like, yo, yo I'm angry at Dame right now. Once I start to do the rationale behind it, and I really take that time to process it, even understand that I'm angry at him, I may not have a desire to now do anything to him at all. It will go to where my emotions are because it's been sorted out in the psyche. Exactly. That makes sense. We spoke about that on the other call. It absolutely makes sense. What was you going to say, Dan? We spoke about that with OG, and um, it's like what I was saying, take a tick and think. Um, The question I was having is, like, what we're seeing right now are people running in the street and and they and they they you know the some people are protesting some people are breaking windows but at the end of the day i feel like everybody forgot about covid during this and i feel like um the way this is being um promoted it's almost to pull our triggers so that we go out and do what we're doing it almost seems intentional to me because I just feel like, you know, um, the way the press moves, the way the government moves, they know how to stifle triggers. They know how to hide triggers. They know how to downplay things. This isn't being downplayed. 
And and, and, and and it just seems like this is just meant to implement fear. Like I, I it's made me very specifically go get a gun license. I mean, this this is the thing. To address kind of what Melody was saying and what you're saying, because they're connected, all right? So people that come up in the black uh, uh, communities and just being black, okay? It's a struggle to even get to the point to make a rational decision. All right, because we're constantly in survival mode. You know, I'm sure you know about, uh, you know, being hypervigilant all the time. And what that does to you neurologically, you know, being ready to die, always fearing the cops, fearing your own, uh, your own down the street. You know, you got kids walking to school by the time they're in first, second grade that got to worry about getting shot. Okay, when you're in that sort of mind, just biologically, it's hard to get into a mode where you can think rationally, okay? And to address your point, Damon, what you're saying is that that weakness can absolutely be used in these types of situations because when when there's absence of rationale and we're not breathing, we're not slowing things down so we can make rational decisions, all right? That's when the fear comes. That's when the anxiety hits, mm -hmm. all right? And while the time it becomes conscious, it's just on what's in front of you at the moment not realizing that this anxiety and fear has been in your life the whole time. And now it's just erupting. So think about it. If you're, if you got people that, I've noticed it with my own clients, the anxiety level was up here just from COVID. And if it wasn't from COVID, it was from the four walls closing in on him because most people ain't used to have to stay in the house like that. You get what I'm saying? So the anxiety level is just all the way up already. Now, you, now for, for people who are having to deal with the situations at hand, yeah, their emotions are already here. So they're not gonna have the full control to even address what you're saying because they're not conscious of it. So absolutely they're susceptible to that. And that's why it's important, you know, emotional regulation is so important for us to, to implement things like mindfulness. You get what I'm saying? To like, to, to show these kids in first, second, third grade how to breathe and calm down. Because the thing with psychology is it wasn't based in the African-American community. And we've talked about this many times. The, the backgrounds of psychology came from white folks who did tests on other white folks. All right? They're just starting to recognize our trauma and how it's affecting us biologically, psych psychologically, socially. They're just starting to find these things out or not just starting to find them out, they're letting the studies come out because before it was oppression that was involved. They didn't want you to know this shit, which is why I picked this profession in the first place. You get what I'm saying? So this is the fight that we're up against is, is we're just starting to study how these things affect us. The one thing that we know is that it leads to, to things like high blood pressure, biologically things that can kill you and mentally not being able to transmit information like everybody else because you're always in survival mode and in hypervigilance all day. How do you, how do you diffuse? You know, right, and, and just to piggyback on what you're saying, Taj, um, it's funny because um, one of my mentors, A.R. Bernard, he always says there's four things that people struggle with in life, and it's maturity, decisiveness, consistency, and strength. There's four things that God wants from a man. Maturity, decisiveness, consistency, and strength. There's four things that women want from a man, that men want from women. Maturity, decisiveness, consistency, and strength. Right. And if you start to break those things down, then you start to see where, where we need to strengthen ourselves as the self that then dictates our actions. And, and those actions becomes habits and those habits become a lifestyle. And you really gotta understand what those things mean. So like maturity, for example, maturity doesn't come with age. Maturity comes with taking responsibility. Mm. True. You understand what I'm saying? Um, decisiveness. The decisiveness is um, insight and action. Right? Consistency has to deal with the character. A lot of our people don't know, recognize who they are. If I asked you, who are you? Would you be able to clearly identify and articulate that in a simple sentence? 
or would you swarm trying to figure out the words? Right. And then life throws so many things at you at the same time that we're constantly entering into different stages and arriving at different levels, which then throws what we believe our definitions of who we are is because it's ever evolving. You understand what I'm saying? And then what was the last one? Um, strength. What? Strength is really, you know, strength is more so like the ability to, like the ability to, 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 to take the courage and to stand on the consistency that you've developed, to stand on that maturity, to stand on that decisiveness, and to really showcase it unapologetically. I mean, those seem like the elements of being where I'm from, a real man, you know, an adult. Right. You know, that, that's, that's the problem with the rest of the world is a lot of those, they might have one, but not all. You need all. But, you know, my question is, um, in this moment, I'm watching people do things that seem from an emotional place. And I don't know how much it's going to yield. You know, breaking things, getting sick, bringing that home to your family. You know, I, I just, I don't, getting hurt. I, I, th these don't seem like profitable business decisions if I were looking at it as a business. How do we bring rationale in this moment where people can get past their emotion and do what's going to be the best interest of the future? Because this has happened before. Riots have happened before. You know, and 30 years later, the same situation, it happens again. It's, I don't think it's ever going to not happen right. that someone's not going to, that someone's going to be unfair to somebody else. It's going to get captured and it's going to provoke emotion. Right. But in this moment, right. it's like so many things going on. It ain't the time. Like, I just feel like we can protest from the house, from computers, you know, virally, the awareness. I just think there's a different way to approach this if we take that time to think and think about what's going to be profitable, what's going to actually hurt. Getting hit with a rubber bullet in the head and, or someone else dying, burning down buildings right after the economy was over. I mean, they were just opening things up. This is going to be devastating, you know? How, what what kind of leadership? Yes. What would you tell people or what would make everyone think rationally right now? One is the acknowledgement that uh, emotions are temporary feelings that can provoke long lasting and permanent results that they may regret later on. Probably. We don't really realize that when we're, when we're in the moment. Why are we telling people So they have to right have now? that understanding, but go ahead. How do we, you how, you're right. How do we deliver that message to emotional people that are gathering up in hundreds and that are that are actually that, that are actually expressing themselves because they've been internalizing a lot from before. Uh, the other day I was walking my dogs, right? I have four dogs. When they see another dog, they all try to jump the other dog. When they can't get to the other dog, um Astro and Governor start fighting each other. Because they can't get to the person they want to get the dog. They fight each other. And I feel like that's what we be doing all the time. How do we, knowing this, stop this bullshit? Right. Just to, just, just to, just to tell you what's going on in theory with your dogs is that that's displaced emotion. Right. right. That's right. what's going on with us. Yeah. What is it becomes this? displaced. Yeah, no. Right? It is. It is. Because no, no, people, want to, people need that relief. It is. It, this is it's thing. like, it's like, it's like, I'm being real candid here. When you go to the bathroom, you take a shit. Mm -hmm. It feels great to do it. When you really get stomach hurt and everything, you're holding everything in and you really go and you relieve yourself. It's one of the best feelings in the world. Yeah, it's shit. And, and so we need to, we need to be, we need to be able to release that. And so that's what's happening. I know. Um, but to answer your question, you have to, you have to take the plier approach and not the sledgehammer approach. A plier opens up your eyes to allow you to draw you in, to, to bring you into your own epiphany that's common to the vision. A sledgehammer is trying to tell you what to do, trying to tell you you're wrong, is with judgment, and so, and people don't receive that well. 
Because now when you when you take that approach, now you're violating my free will, my free will to think. And people protect their free will. It's part of the it's part of their survival skills. Well, that's a good so way it's easy that, to take the plier approach. Well, that's a good way to trigger somebody is to say this, just to make them uh, go ahead, um, talk. No, this is the thing. Uh, okay, short term, if you're talking about like okay, how do we quell these situations that are occurring like now? Therapeutically and clinically, the people that are therapists that come from these neighborhoods, okay, that that know what's happening, have an intimate experience need to make themselves available to these people. Mm. Meaning we need to provide services, okay? Because this is a bigger problem than right now, okay? In the short term, that's how we should address it as therapy. Meaning, okay? Or if you're an elder, or if you're a homie that run your hood and people, you got influence. We have to create spaces where people feel safe to express themselves without feeling weak. Correct. All right, because you got to understand, like, we're dealing with the black culture, dog. And, 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 and it's like, it changed, the rules changed. Our profession has not taught nobody how to deal with that. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? Well, how do we do like, that I, tomorrow? I, you know, so, so we, like, like how you, you know, like, how you have the health network, right? Mm-hmm. And you got diabetes, you feel me? So what do you do? You make a platform that's diabetic, that's diabetes friendly. And you get right. information about diabetes. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, so right I, now, I, I, what we can do is get into the neighborhoods. Like, I stay in the neighborhoods. I talk to these kids. I talk to the teenagers. I talk to the young people that's out there doing that shit right now. Hmm. That's what needs to happen. I have, I have an idea. I have an idea. I have an idea, too, when you finish. No, no, I was thinking. Go ahead. I'm still thinking about I think my that, idea. I, I think that if, if we were, it has to come with economic reform because I think that that also helps us to a very large degree. Money is power to a certain degree or at least the illusion of money is power. Um, so if we, let's say for example, Dan, you decide to say, no, get your top, and, and, and Taj, Taj, get your top, 20 leaders that we know operate out of these four elements that we spoke of today mm-hmm. right and we're gonna buy these 10 blocks and now we're, we're literally we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna buy every house on these 10 blocks and now within these 10 blocks we're also gonna then take all those women that know how to sew we're gonna say you guys are gonna now start your clothing company internally, and everyone's only gonna buy within these ten blocks your stuff. You oh you can cook, oh oh you know healing, oh you know medicine, and then we're gonna create connect groups within those ten blocks and have that leadership really overshadow and take it over, and then create a neighborhood coalition. That I like that plan. I've never really seen that done. I like that plan, but it's long term. We need some immediate relief. You're talking about crisis intervention, then. I'm talking about right now. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's crisis intervention. That's what you mean. Like, uh, basically, this that's why I was saying what needs to happen right now is the people that have this knowledge need to get it to the people that need it. You know what I'm saying? And yes, you're gonna risk catching COVID. You're gonna have to throw your mask on, get your balls up, and get out there in the hood. You get what I'm saying? And that's what needs to happen. You feel me? Let me, I get, tell, you, or, let me or, tell you what's or, so funny with mm-hmm, that. And then not to interrupt you. Or like what you're doing now. Uh, how we're doing this right now. You know what I mean? People need to use their platforms correctly. You know, if, if you're from this community and, you know, you're an influencer, even if you're an Instagram model, even if whatever you're doing, if you have millions of people that are following you in between you, Marketing your mixtape and, and or, or, or you know, marketing yourself as a model or whatever you're doing, put this information out there. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Especially ones that know, especially people like you and me that are registered. You get what I'm saying? And this is our profession. That's that, those for sure, those people, but also the people that are, that are socially conscious. So, you, right. you know, what I need you to do happening. that's how we address this right now. You know, what I need you to do. I need after this to videotape a good minute or two of what we need to be doing so I can post it up. Both of you, please. 
Like say That's who, fine. What say who you, you are, on, on say who you tour. are, you know, and be like, look, this is the way we need to, you know what I mean? And say these things. And that is a message that I will distribute, that I can distrib- distribute immediately. But yeah, I and also just to piggyback on Taj, um, let's say if we did a, 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 you know, we have to, if we did a mega Zoom conference with influencers and with people to be able to watch, you need to have, and this, this is going back to being organized and, and organizing better. These Zoom conferences that you may have with these people, these resources and these plugs that we have as a collective, if we all got together and did Zooms, we would actually have to organize a back end of administrators taking down notes, a back end of administrators um, starting to specifically focus on just resource banks with whatever topic area we're talking about. Then we need to create a platform. So, for example, we would tell people who are watching, if you're into real estate, well, I, I can tell you, you this. You want to build that way for the long term. I was talking. I want you to specifically email real estate at dame-dash.com. Well, if I, you are into herbs, you're gonna really you, you're gonna leave your name, number, contact information, handle X Y Z at ag, you know at healing and health at dame.com. And then we now take all, when all these people start emailing saying, hey, I'm into healing, I'm into agriculture, I'm into real estate, I'm into this. We now take that back group and we say, listen, your list is this, you're going to create a group for that, you're going to create a group for that, you're going to create a group for that, and start creating these sub-connect groups all through your platform. Go ahead. Well, again, I was talking to the congressman today and he had me on the phone with someone that had technology for doctors that... Every time you like, you know, text a question or whatever it goes and this AI puts it and they kind of are getting it for data and this kind of thing. And I was saying that something similar to that could be used for a congressman or therapist or all these kind of things. Because all these questions are asked, but they're not answered. And, and, you know, people have concerns and this, that, and the third. And it's just like you know, getting data and just figuring out how to deal with it based on all the different people that are going through the same thing. So yeah, that's, that's again, another long-term thing. But it, I like these long-term plans. You know, that's chess. But in this moment, we got to play checkers. And it got to be strong moves. And I do have, yeah, a, I do have mm-hmm. a platform, but I need to be able to hit people tomorrow. You know? This is the tomorrow plan I'm talking about. Well, if that's the thing, the tomorrow plans lead into the long term, you know? And, and that's that's why, like, we have to have the proper scope of this battle that we fight. You get what yeah. I'm saying? Ultimately, yes, there's a lot of crisis that we have to intervene on, absolutely correct. But this is also a problem that took hundreds of years for us to get into. Well, and reason- we have to, and, and one, of the, one of our weaknesses as black people because we're so used to struggling day to day with daily stress, is that we don't think long term. So this is what you I'm saying, saying, Taj. This is what I'm saying. The reason why, in this moment, I thought it was important for me, with yeah. a platform, to talk to people that are professional, like about how to deal with people's mentality. Right. What is it that I could say, and have other people say, communicate on my platform, which I think you told me. Yeah. That would be immediate right now that may have people taking that second that you spoke about, both of you, and think rationally and then start thinking long term. Because in this moment, I don't see long term thinking. I see long term frustration. Yeah, people want to be heard and and people want to feel um, heard. And it goes back to what I'm saying, that, that release. People need that release. So if, if we can look for a way to have that happen, that would be very beneficial. Like one of the ideas that we have for Wednesday is having two lines and have, you know where we're, we're going to be stationed at. And um, one line for protesters to make their own statement of how they're feeling. And then what? another line of officers to make a statement of how they're feeling. But can't they and get- literally doing a public peer mediation session mm-hmm. on the grounds. It's a but, but, you have a group session. But That's can't what they I was can't about 
they can, this information to the people. But you could do that on a Zoom. You could do that on a video because right now it's not safe. So right now, yeah, we, yeah, it would be we easier. Could, I mean, we have the advantage because right. since we're connected to the officers, we could just we could just call the officers yeah. to, to surround us, and we'll be fine. So why why we, know, why so why don't we set up a Zoom with your officers and the Zoom with some people and let them talk? But on the Zoom, can't nobody throw a rock at each other at a Zoom? <clears throat> Let's televise yeah. that. You know. I mean, I could definitely go get a bishop, a senator, a congressman, a, some therapists, some street guys, all the elite, and to be able to talk to the cops. So they can talk and say they wait, and with a therapist to trans, translate. We need right. to do the shit that they not doing. Like, they right. don't know, so like, like, this is so not... You, the, want a, you want a mega group? No, no, no. Group session. Your cops, how many, however many police, let's get and select... A bunch of different people from different select that can articulate and let them talk on the Zoom and have that forum and, and tape it and let them talk. Because so yeah. right now, it, it don't, right now, being in the same room, it, it, number one, it ain't healthy. It ain't healthy mentally or, or physically because of COVID. So, so it makes sense to do that. And if we could do it, like I could get literally... I could get 70, 70 black principals right now with off school grounds. I just call my man and 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 ladies and dentists and, and we right there. We could do that. I I, I could I mean because we want to help. I could call a bishop right now in Newark and they'll have his whole ministry on there and they'll all have questions for these cops and speak intellectually. If you could get those cops, I could definitely get a nice audience and we could have that conversation. We could do that tonight. I mean, we just keep it, you know, we just have some designated representatives of each demographic, right? You know what I mean? And what we could do is like you always do is throw it on the live. You know, we could have somebody uh, taking questions on the live for people that are just tuning in, you know, for the, you know, for somebody that just might be at the house. Well, I'm on the live right now. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, so but, but well, also well, then, and then we put it out, but I just think, People need to hear what the police got to say from a human perspective, and the police got to hear what we got to say from a human perspective, but no one should be able to spit, smell, or swing, or throw rocks at each other, and get or, yes. or give each other COVID. Right, so let me, let me just, I just want to make a smart remark concerning COVID, and this is, this is Melody saying this, not the therapist. I find it very interesting that we had all these protests, right? Yeah. And our numbers are still dropping. Our, no, our numbers here in New York are still dropping. I look today, only 54 people have passed away with COVID. How, how many new, how many new, um, it's about how many new cases is going to be tomorrow. Right. So, so I'm curious to see if there's an inflation. It was an inflation or in we LA. Continue to digress. But from what I'm seeing so far, I haven't seen an inflation yet. So I find the conspiracy theorist in me is like, no, I find no, it's no, very no. interesting. Don't do that. <laughs> the day, yo, every day in LA is the numbers have been bubbling. Bu 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 oh, there's one up out there. Every mm -hmm. day. It's, okay. it's, 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 it's okay. Yeah, so I, I mean, I think that I think that, that we're making segue here. I, I think we should coin this something like breaking the ice. Can you get guess, your, can you get uh, your police on I, the Zoom? I, 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 can we talk? I'd like I'm to sorry? talk to them. Can we get the police that you know, even five of them on the Zoom? Yeah, I'm gonna call Lieutenant Mike and everybody when I get off. When I, get I, think, I think too it's important that we hear from um, you know if we're gonna hear from law enforcement and we're gonna create that you know that discord or that discourse i think that they should be officers that are not with what's happening officers in terms of that are speaking you know well, those are the ones you know like you said those that the ones are advocating you know. for the right type of law enforcement you know oh, okay. So you mean the ones that are now out there right now? No, these officers. So he, my officers are court officers, correction officers, yes. peace officers, and NYPD. We yes, have our yes. We, we need to talk to them. That's what I mean. You know, Get because them. we don't hear enough from the good cops. Right. We don't hear so, enough from them. Because right. So there's no I, way. There's no way that there's nothing that there's nothing. Can no cop tell me that's going to make excuses for what's happening? No, no, what, he, what he's saying is, I, I think y'all both saying the same thing. Yeah. What he's saying is make sure that cops that are, are against what just happened. But she, oh, yeah, was, yeah, she was yeah. saying that the cops so she was example, speaking to want to do that. They want to know whether to do it in a uniform or not. 
They could do it in both. But let me just say this. I will give them the platform right now to do that. For each one of the, each, like what I would do the same way that I just asked you to give me some sort of advice so I could put on my Instagram, tell every one of those cops to tell me how they feel and I'll put it on my Instagram. You know? So I'll you want it. a statement for a statement of po of, of, to post? For them, and if, they says, want, if they want to communicate. how they're feeling, but then it says, Lieutenant Mike, yeah. or XYZ. Right, but then also I, do, I want to do the Zoom as well. I want to give them as much access as possible right now if they're saying the right shit. But I also want to hear it from people from both, you know? Right. But if we got some cops um, that can say some good shit, I'm with it. Yeah, I do. Um, so, so I just want to preference this around. Um, so, so Taj, you and I would have to come up yeah. with ground rules. Absolutely. And when the Zoom starts, it would have to literally be these are the ground rules. And if you break them, Taj and I, and I think that Taj and I should I, be the host as the therapist. I'm gonna have. You, I'm gonna have. Listen, listen, listen. I'm gonna have principals, bishops. I'm going to have, um, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to get a senator. I'm, I'm going to try to get a congressman, you know, and I think it, it can happen. It, that, I think it'll be easy. None of these you know, people. What she's saying, what she's saying is, is that I'm, she, uh, in, a, in a therapeutic, because basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running a group session. Right. So she's telling, she's telling me clinically right, that right. we be the facilitator. And that Correct. we have, you remember like- I'm just I telling you the kind of people remember? that was going to be there, there shouldn't be no emotional bugging out. People should- Yeah, remember when I did like, the intervention? Yeah. And I had to tell everybody to let everybody talk and, you know, right. stuff like right. that. But, but not only that, it's also to, as us as therapists, we know how, what we usually do in group therapy is when we let people talk, is as the therapist, before we move on to the next, we summarize what the person has just said and help them put it into words. Right. So they can feel the validation. Absolutely. And when they feel the validation, then they feel heard. But it has to come from a clinical therapist to do it so they feel like it's a therapeutic setting. Exactly. So that's the only reason why I said Taj and I can host as the clinical therapist so mm -hmm. that when we listen, we can, we can help transfer who's going to speak next but next but before we do we have to validate that client's absolutely. feelings yeah absolutely because it's a, it, and, it, and it, so it, now it. they feel like they received something they didn't just only just speak they actually received something back so if you say to me x y like how you how you've been speaking right now damn i've been able to tell you well what you're speaking towards is the four things that people struggle with in life and you state them and now it clicks for you like Oh, shoot, I never looked at it like that. All right, boom, we got you out the way. You're served. You've been serviced. Next one. You know, so uh, clinical therapists are trained to listen so that we can call repeating the response back to the client. Mm, exactly. It, it, and, and it solidifies their release. I like it. But, but what I'm saying is we would have to also develop ground rules. And, like, the ground rules have to be, like how you said, there, there is no... There is no Defame, whatever it is, we'll come up with it. And if you do, it needs to be very strict. You, the host will boot you out. You will be dismissed from the group immediately if you break a rule. Absolutely. And so you set that tone, and now people are also. They, they, it kind of helps them. You can curse, you can this, you can that, but you know, you 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 can't say no. You're a pig. Shut up. Right. You're a fucking pig. That's it. Yeah. You can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Be, so be the if you do that, it, it, it would be real life. You know right. It, it, it would be an automatic dismissal, but we would have to say all those rules so that they are aware that that that, that before we we boot them out if they take that that approach. Yeah. No. Most definitely. Okay. So you're gonna um you're gonna call the lieutenant and let me know. Yeah, I can call them. All right. And and you know we have we we, we have access to to a few counselors. Uh, council members and senators too because I, I, I do a lot of legislation as well. Bring them. That's so all talk. I'll, I'll contact um, uh, uh, Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams. He, he's come to my rallies. Jamani Williams, the, the, the gentleman that was like, I'm not okay. Um, we have rallied together. Um, count, Councilwoman Farrah Lewis and Senator Kevin Parker. Ke Senator Kevin Parker writes a lot of my laws um, and tries to get them passed for me and he's the where you, political you, you, whip for you, the Democratic Party here. You lobby you, you lobby for laws? For foster care. I write them. 
Wow. If Interesting. Yeah. Nice. And, um, you know, um, I mean, I don't know. Uh, are we going to keep going or are we? Well, no, like we keep going. You got something? Okay. To I just have one last thing basically to say. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if we're going to come into a conclusion or not. But for the people that are like, that have perspectives on like the uprisings and the riots and things like that, I understand not condoning looting and I understand, you know, uh, uh, not hurting people and, and things like that. But at the same time, and Melody you spoke to it, is that we need validation. A lot of this mm -hmm. is about validation. You know what I'm saying? So if you're constantly, if, if people are constantly just addressing and making this about looting and making this uh, about like the things that are happening actually in the streets, but they're not validating the causes, they're making it worse. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because it's in clinical terms, like you just said, when we have a client in front of us, all right, we have to validate how they're feeling. Okay, we may not agree with how they're feeling, but we have to make them feel heard. You right. know what I'm saying? So I encourage people, you know, this is the time for everybody to practice some type of empathy. You get what I'm saying? Especially if you're from the black community. But if you come off the community, you need to be validating why these things are happening. Not just addressing the looting. Not just addressing, you know, the, some of the things that are going on in the riot. Because these are all symptoms of a problem. Okay? If you, if you delete the problem and deal with the problem, the symptoms, the symptoms start to dissipate. You know what I'm saying? They start to disappear. If you're just talking about the symptoms and this is all we're focusing on, we're not going to get nowhere. Right. It's the same thing as if we're if we're treating mental illness. Right. You know, and that's, that's why you need to summarize back to them with what yeah. you've heard. Yeah, and I'm just saying this in general, just in, in for people that's watching the news, you know what I'm saying? Like, because there's a lot of twisting of narratives going on right now. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of we're getting blamed for a lot of things we're not even doing. You get what I'm saying? And You're speaking in regards to what? In, in, in regards to what's going on in the streets. I was there in the uprising. I was there. You know what I'm saying? And I and I saw for myself, you know, no disrespect to any other, like, you know, uh, uh, I want to call them, uh, uh, you know, people that are down with us. You know what I'm saying? Whether they're another race, creed, or whatever it is. You feel me? But, you know, we're getting blamed for stuff. Like, I saw violence coming from white people in the, in, in the riots. I saw white folks hitting up the walls. And tearing yes. up the and looting. Yes, at the Barclay yeah, Center, we had a lot of that. Yeah, when you watch the news or you watch what's going on, all you're going to see is a young black person or a young brown person. And I'm going to tell you right now, a good 50 to 60 percent of the people that's out there are not black or brown. And shouts out to them, I get it, but y'all also got to understand that don't let us, don't leave us on the island either. Don't go out, don't go and fuck up shit and then be like, oh, you get what I'm saying? So, yeah, I mean, I per I personally feel like if, if if you are not black or brown or Afro Latino, yeah. you have to, you can't do anything without the permission of the people who are the front lines. Yes. If you are, not, if you are, you know, with all due respect. Yeah, absolutely. And it's like, and, 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 right, and we need to make that very clear to them. We appreciate that you're angry for us, but we didn't ask you to do that. Right. And you can't do that without our permission. Yeah, that and speak up and take responsibility for it. You get what I'm saying? If you're really down for this cause, speak up. Don't just go around with a mask on and tear some shit up. Speak on it. Say, I did this. You get what I'm saying? Because otherwise, it's going to be another reason for them to take my son to jail, take me to jail, take some other black person to jail, some other Afro-Latino person to jail. You get what I'm saying? It just, it just adds to what's already happening. Right. So you might mean well, but you're making things worse if you're not taking accountability for something. You get what I'm saying? So for, for the black folks, for the white folks, for the Latino, anybody who has an opinion about these riots, okay? If you're not there outside in the field and you're not in the terror dome with us, all right? Research your facts before you state an opinion. Research what's really happening. Don't just believe the news. Don't just believe what a politician is telling you. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's basically what I wanted to say, because we've been dealing with this for hundreds and hundreds of years. I love the ideas that we came with today. We're setting up that. That's a cheat. I love it. Dang, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, 
bringing everybody together, you facilitating the police, you know, uh, uh, bringing other people in. Like, that's the perfect way to start addressing these things now. You feel me? But I also want my folks, my black folks, my Latinos, yo, like exercise rationale, exercise patience. This is chess. It's not checkers. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, don't go on the chessboard playing checkers. Otherwise, the same thing is just going to keep occurring. So if we all have a little empathy for each other. And to all the other races that's helping us, thank you. Thank you so much. But have some kind of communication with us, too, so that we can truly get on one page. You feel me? And that's pretty much, you know, what I wanted to say. Absolutely. So you're going to get back on the line. We're going to try to do this tomorrow, right? Yeah. So what is your target date for um, your, uh, I guess we we'll call it as breaking the ice? Uh, tomorrow. Zoom public peer mediation session? Tomorrow. I can get my crew tomorrow. A good, nice, solid, smart, intelligent crew. You want me to bring some, like, you want me to bring somebody in? I mean, if, if, if you need to, if, you, if there's someone you I think... I mean, I could bring some homies. I could, you know... Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah bring, bring a voice from... Yeah, definitely. Bring one of your, one of your OGs. I'll bring one of mine. So right. what is some representation that we want to have? Since if we're going to do this, we're probably going to be the pioneers to do this first. So we want to make sure that we, we do it right and we have all representation. Like, my boy... Um, I didn't like his delivery, but I I got his point. Um, Brother Polite, you know, he, he had put up, me and Brother Polite both studied with Dr. York when, when we were growing up. So we have a lot of the same background in terms of, you know, being five percenters at one point and so forth. But um, he was like, where's the gangs at? And I'm like, oh gosh, Brother Polite. But, you know, so, but I do agree you know we can have a i'm talking about i got extreme, i got all that i got it i got yep, it yep an extreme i got the race i got a it. variety of people yeah i got it don't um, worry about that so I let's make it. sure that we, we we touch every sub i got sub it let me, are we, let me are we removing white people from this platform no 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 <laughs> at least no. starting off or are we making sure that they are also included i think some white people should be there if we got some i got some good white people to bring Absolutely. That'll create some of that communication that we're talking about. And if it's okay, um, can we incorporate some clinical exercises? I have, yeah. In terms of like, you know, um, Taj, you know how they have mirror, the exercise mirror? Mm -hmm. Like I want, I want you to look into the screen as if it's a mirror and I want you to talk to your abuser. We do that in session all the time. Oh yeah, that's like the that's like the chair technique. The stall Correct, the chair. Yeah. So so maybe you and I can come up with an outline, Taj, so we okay. get a little bit of people being able to vent, a little bit of clinical exercises together, mm -hmm. as a collective, you know, um, and 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 we just kind of like just bring it all together and make sure everything's just clinical. Okay. Cool. Round rules, vent sessions, rebuttals and then um, clinical exercises to defuse. Yeah. Yeah. So just yeah, just tell me what time just tell me what time tomorrow. We'll connect, prepare, and let's make it happen. It sounds good. I, I want to see this happen. Yeah, are we going to have a flyer for this to start as uh, you know, circulating around and get more people to at least yeah, watch. Yeah, once we have the information, I will definitely make one. All right. So, only, only information I need tomorrow? is. Did, you said? I, we doing yeah, it tomorrow? I think it's necessary tomorrow. I'd like to do it tonight if I could. Because either way, we're going to tape it. And, and also, remember, we have time differences. It's, 11, it's midnight out here. So, tell me, just to, like I said. <laughs> just, I'm trying to get it right. Like, that's what I'm saying. Tell us, there, like, tell, exactly. tell us. Tell us. It's really on the cops. Tell us what time, and I'll make it happen. My, pe um, my people is ready. Um, they want to help. All right, we may have to jump in a group chat, guys, just to make sure that we, we, we go right. back and forth. So let's get offline. We'll start a group text and let's make it happen. Okay, great. All right. Thank you very much. Very productive. I appreciate both of you. I didn't know. I was like, I don't know what to do. I got to talk. I need some therapy.
Because I don't know what to do. I really don't. Do you feel like you received something out of here? Look, now we're going to... Yeah, we're I have a plan. We're going to cl clinically close this session out the right way. 100%. Do you feel like you received something from here? And give us three things you believe you, you, you were able to accomplish out of this session for yourself. I got clarity of a, of a plan. And I have one that's going to happen. So my release will happen tomorrow. But I know that I'm doing something. And I'm trying you know, I'm not just sitting back, you know, talk, talking, <coughs> talking and complaining. <clears throat> I'm trying to fight the right fight, a strategic psychological fight. I don't believe this is physical. I believe it's mental. And I believe it's like a perspective and I believe that it can happen safe. And I know that I'm doing something that's in that direction. So I feel better. Okay, give me one word to describe how you was feeling right before this meeting and one word to this, just one word to describe how you feel now. Well, uh, I was feeling confused before. And now? Now I feel less confused. One word to describe how you're feeling now. Better. It has to be a, a, an actual word, an emotional word, an adjective, I believe is what it's called. Like, that is not like I, I know, feel, I feel more coherent. I feel clear. I'm clear. Okay, so you went from confusion to clear. Matter of fact, that should be on. That should be on. That should be on the flight. From confusion to clear. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, it makes every. It make, definitely makes you feel better. Hey, I, we got to bring her on healing as gangster. I like her style. Yeah, I like but, your style of like, you know, we just did, we just did bring her on Healing is Gangster. We just did bring her on Healing is Gangster. Oh, well, there you go. Another show, Healing is Gangster. <laughs> I've never been on Healing is Gangster. Yeah, right. Now you're on it right now. That's my show. Oh, is this a, uh, oh, we getting recorded to be on a show? <laughs> no, me and Dame is hustlers. We doing like five different things with this, uh, with this little broadcast right here. We're going to make it a TV show. It's going to be a post on Instagram. It's going to be all kinds of stuff. I have a show called Healing is Gangster that I do, that I'm, I'm, I'm going to start filming the second season too. And I was telling him that I like your style. Clinically, I like your style. Like, I like how you, you know, do your therapy thing. And I would love to have you on the show, you know, because I always have like guests and, you know, different people on the show. But I've never okay. had another therapist yeah. on, especially another black therapist. So Brilliant. Yeah, yeah that's basically why I thought she would be good to be here. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys, let's continue the conversation. <laughs> So yeah, let's 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 wrap it up. Healing is gangster, yeah. and and appreciate uh, the energy that you brought and the solutions and the clarity. And the next thing will be consistency. So that's what he was trying to bring into it. We'd like you to stay with us. So thank you. All right, later. Peace. Have a good night. Well, yeah. All right, so thank you. One hundred. Well, yeah. All right, so I'm trying to figure some things out, make a difference in the right way, think smart, do it from a therapeutic perspective because we all need it, you know. No, he didn't just throw up a Hitler sign. I'll be stupid. All right, everybody, I'm out. Can you put this up?